once a derelict grain store, this stunning home is now an award-winning conversion with a price tag of more than a million pounds. But amazingly, the owner hasn't spent a lifetime climbing the property ladder. He's only been in the market seven years. Stay with us as we reveal just how he's managed to achieve such a spectacular result. And we're going behind the scenes of the region's very own House Design Awards to reveal this year's prize property. Walking along the side of the Long Barn, you can't help admire it, can you? It's got that contemporary feel, but so sympathetically done, I really love it. With those spectacular views across the Bedfordshire countryside, owner Nick Tai knew he could use this place as a real showcase for his architect practice. But I want to know what his vision was that's led him to this place in such a relatively short space of time. He's only been in the property market a mere seven years. This is a stunning property. It's a stunning location and a, and a stunning property. Take us back to when you first had this, this germ of an idea that you, you wanted to, to build something like this. We were living in London and um, Alison's uh, uh, a keen gardener and we both come from the countryside originally in the Hertfordshire area and uh, we were missing having some outside space and uh, although we'd been in London for many years we were looking at other opportunities to buy somewhere with some space outside and a bit more peace and quiet from the hustle and bustle where we were in Islington. Um, so, was uh, it love at first sight? Uh, it certainly was for me. It was an incredible site and building and it's, it's very rare um, to find such a place. And so I knew that if we were going to act, we had to act quickly. The original building was in a, in a reasonable state insofar as the timber framework, the old oak framework and the roofing was in excellent uh, condition. Uh, the brickwork was, was poor and, and dilapidated and there was some storm damage uh, from some years ago where the corner of the building had actually been blown out. It had just obviously been used for agricultural grain store and uh, machine storage use so it was never intended to be you know, a home. So although the structure was there, the, there needed a lot of work. And it was a bit like a test bed, you know, for trying various ideas and using differing materials and specification to see what might work. Because we had a very tight budget and we knew that we had to be very, very careful with how we specified materials. When you look at the outside of the building, you can see elements of modernism and, and, and contemporary, but it's not really until you get inside that you see this sort of very different kind of canvas. If we'd literally stripped the barn back and, and made the whole building, uh, not true to its origins, I think then it would have been a little bit false. And so it was being respectful to the original building, but then bringing in modern living. It's that mix, I think, that makes it actually very successful. And have all your ideas worked? I think so. Uh, <laughs> we, we get uh, a lot of amazed people walking into the building. They're, they're often open-mouthed and really excited to have a look around. And um, of course, uh, it's not to everyone's taste and people will like particular bits and, and think others are, are not how they would like them. But uh, for our living, of course, we're, we're in a luxurious position. I, I'm an architect and a designer. I can design it exactly how we'd want to live. And so um, if it's not successful, then I've done a bad job. So it's been, it's been very successful for us, yeah. Nick and his wife, Alison, have achieved this fantastic effect in just two years and have recently won a National Design Award for their barn. We'll be returning to Nick a little later to find out how he managed to build his million pound pad in such a short amount of time. After his studies, Nicholas began showing signs of becoming a budding entrepreneur. He began renovating that property. We'd start to do odd sort of tweaks and refurbishments to it, um, which I guess is where I, I first started to explore ideas. And at the time I was a student, and um, so the budgets were uh, about as tight as they get, and um, but it was a good chance to start experimenting with things. So what sort of things were you doing? It was um, mainly um, taking back of some of the fabric uh, of the, the developers installed to expose some walls, um, using uh, colours and textures to change the faces of, of walls and ceilings, etc. Uh, a bit of lighting design and um, uh, fitting out of uh, kitchens, etc. 
Well, Nick was still a long way off being able to afford his current home, but he was already planning his next step up the property ladder. He was about to become a pioneer in the loft living phenomenon. This is uh, St John Street in Clark and Wellington, and uh, this was the second of our moves in our chain. And I uh, bought this apartment as a shell from a developer to uh, really sort of put our first mark on uh, an apartment. It was like a blank canvas, effectively, with just uh, large uh, windows to the outside wall that you can see behind me. The area was very run down and, and derelict generally, and so we were one of the sort of first people to start moving into the area, and we, we had a lot of fun developing this, this place. The original price was uh, 158000 um, which at the time was uh, an OK kind of price. Uh, retrospectively, it's now you know, a very cheap price, but at the time we were worried about negative equity. We spent about uh, 35000 doing the fit-out. We sold it five years later for 440000 So that was a whopping £247,000 profit. Enough money for Nick and his wife to start looking for a retreat in the country. Join us after the break to see how he continued his impressive three moves. Nicholas Ty has gone from a run-down apartment in South London to this £1 million house in the beautiful Bedfordshire countryside. While at university in London, he lived in a one-bedroom flat in Southwark before graduating to a bare loft space in Clerkenwell. Using his training, he designed a fantastic contemporary apartment but decided to sell up during the height of the city living phenomenon, hankering for life in the country. That was a huge change in your life, wasn't it? It was a huge change. We started off by uh, looking um, in sort of various places in Bedfordshire and realised that it was the area that we could move to in terms of the general costs of property to the area and um, decided that we'd instruct a contractor and uh, they, they would build it for us. So we instructed the contractor who unfortunately uh, went into liquidation and we were on a, an incredible down at the time for obvious reasons and uh, realised that there might be a silver lining to the cloud and um, that was uh, doing a self-build and so getting more sort of hands-on experience but in this case it was going to be not just fitting out but the bricks and mortar and learning the carpentry and learning how to uh, literally build this building and um, take one year out of full-time employment uh, knowing that it was going to be baked beans and water for that year but knowing that you know we had a, a great opportunity of a wonderful house that we could then carry on commuting into London. However, once Nick finished the build, he realised he couldn't pull himself away and, in another bold move, left his city job to start his own architect's practice from his country home. In Bedfordshire, it was a complete wreck. For 150 years, it had been used as a grain store. But once it was in the hands of Nick, his vision and perseverance has transformed it into a unique four-bedroomed home. It's packed full of innovative ideas. Design sometimes can be very, very simple looking, but it can be very complicated in its mechanics of how it's made. And various aspects of the build uh, look simple, and they are very simple, but the stairs are complicated. You know, the, the foundation structure that was required, the specification of the steel and how it was pinned to the reinforced concrete walls, finishes and everything else were, were a little bit more in-depth. But uh, sometimes knowing that in-depth detail gives you the, the fantastic simple results. We like the, the scenario where we can kind of tuck everything away. And so we've deliberately designed a lot of cabinetry and special sliding uh, units so that we can make it very easy to maintain and clean, etc. The table was quite a success story as well, isn't it? Yes, we didn't have a table from our previous uh, apartment. And we had some leftover pieces of, of sheets of plywood. And um, Alison asked the question, well, we've run out of money now, Nick, and uh, we haven't got a dining room table, and uh, can you please come up with a good idea? So, uh, chatting to the chippy that we had on site, I said, look, we've got to make something out of what we've got left, what can we do? And uh, so we, we designed this very, very simple, um, almost oriental looking kind of bench and, and, and table. And we've had people phoning up saying, you know, where can you get it? You know, is it from Italy or America or, you know, whether it costs thousands of pounds, we don't care. We just, we've got to have that table and, and bench. And so we end up giving a mobile number for our chippy and saying, well, if you've got a couple of hundred pounds and this is how you do it. So it's, uh, it's, been, it's, been, it's been a joy to have those kind of scenarios of very, very cheap materials, but designing them in very interesting ways. Are you happy here? Is, th is this it for you? Is this, are you where you're going to be for the rest of your lives? Um, it's funny you should ask that, but only last week Alison was saying to me, when's the next one? Where is it? You know, let's, let's build another house. And uh, we've been through a roller coaster ride, as you can imagine, doing a self-build project like this over a couple of years, to me thinking, right, well, this is it, Nick. You're not going to be able to move on from here because you're not going to be allowed to. 
But uh, she surprised me and said, you know, let's build another house. And uh, somehow she's got through the up and down of, of building a house and uh, the idea of a new one. So who knows?